AMD's Ryzen processors offer some very good performance for what you pay, but one of the best features in my opinion is that they can all be overclocked. Now, a lot of you already know this, and for some of you, overclocking your CPU is as trivial as tying your shoelaces. However, I do understand that a lot of you are just getting into building your own PCs and have asked me to break down the basics and run you through how to overclock your CPU step by step. Firstly, let's talk about what overclocking is and also the included benefits and drawbacks. Overclocking in the general sense refers to increasing the clock speed of which a processor runs at beyond its intended or stock speed. The clock in overclocking refers to the clock cycle of the processor and each clock cycle contains a distinct number of instructions. Without getting too technical, just know that by increasing the clock speed of your processor, that is the number of clock cycles per second, you are increasing the rate of which instructions are executed by the CPU. So by increasing the amount of instructions that your processor can execute in a given time frame, you'll get a boost in performance. Now, we're specifically going to look at overclocking an AMD Ryzen CPU today, but understand that you can overclock almost any computer hardware that contains a processing chip. This could be your GPU, your RAM, or even your calculator or TV, although I wouldn't recommend trying that. There are two variables that we'll be changing in order to effectively overclock our CPU. This is the clock speed, which we just spoke about, and also the voltage that the CPU is operating at. Generally, as we increase the clock speed, we also need to increase the voltage to keep the CPU stable. By stable, I simply mean that the CPU doesn't crash, freeze, or completely fail under load. Usually, if the CPU is unstable under load, you'll see a blue screen, letting you know that something went wrong. Other instability events include the system freezing up or simply shutting down, and this could be due to insufficient voltage or overheating, which is fairly uncommon and we'll talk about in a few minutes. We'll be testing the CPU stability after each overclocking attempt in a program called Cinebench R15. Do note that for more extensive stability testing, I do recommend IDA64 and Prime95, but for quick and easy testing, we're going to be using Cinebench, which will give you a solid idea of how things are running with certain clock speed and voltage values. So before you begin, make sure you have this downloaded and you can find it in the description below. Now let's discuss the main drawback of overclocking, which is the increase in heat being generated from the CPU. This is due to both the processor running at a faster clock speed and the increase in voltage. It's important to note though that the increase in voltage is responsible for the majority of the heat increase, and this is something to keep in mind if temperature and noise is something that you want to control. Overclocking is completely safe and will not destroy your computer hardware if done properly. However, do keep in mind that you will be avoiding your warranty of your processor by doing so. This might sound scary at first, but the probability of you having to RMA your processor after a sensible overclock is very slim. So before we get started, make sure your Ryzen processor is installed into an overclockable motherboard. That means it's either a B350 or X370 board. Either are fine and I found the overclocking limits to be the same for both. However, you may find higher quality components such as voltage regulator modules and capacitors on the X370 motherboards as this is AMD's enthusiast chipset that does cost a little more than the B350. But as I mentioned before, B350 is totally fine too and is what I'll be using. We're going to be using the Ryzen Master software to overclock but do note that you can also change the processor's clock speed and voltage through the motherboard's BIOS. However, using the Ryzen Master software is definitely a lot easier for beginners. Now, let's discuss the general strategy when it comes to overclocking your CPU, and then the strategy that we'll be using. As I said previously, there are two variables that we're going to be manipulating, the clock speed and the voltage. The usual consensus is to first leave the voltage as is, in this case at 1.25 volts, and keep increasing the clock speed until the CPU is unstable. Then increase the voltage a little by around 0.25 volts and then try increasing the clock speed again. Keep increasing the clock speed while the CPU is stable and in the event of instability, increase the voltage. This does give you a great idea of what voltage your processor needs at certain clock speeds, but if you just wanna jump right in and see what your CPU is capable of, we're going to try a different method. To avoid much unnecessary trial and error and instability, we're going to first start by increasing the CPU voltage by an acceptable amount and then increasing the clock speed as far as we can before we hit a wall, skipping the first few voltage increments that we know we'll eventually make. I know from experience that Ryzen CPUs can handle 1.3 volts without cooling issues, so that's going to be our starting point. Now, first start up the Ryzen Master software and you should get a nice warm welcome letting you know that if you proceed to change the voltage and clock speeds of your CPU, AMD does not support your warranty. Click OK and you should see the control panel. Now it does look a bit overwhelming, but don't worry, AMD did a great job at making this look a lot more complicated than it actually is. Right now, you're looking at tab C, which basically shows you the current operating values of your CPU. 
Right now, mine's idling, so as you can see, it's not doing a whole lot. When it comes to actually monitoring your CPU though, these values in the corner show you the current temperature and clock speed of your processor. We'll be watching these values closely as we run our stress test. Now, in the same row, you'll see all of these sliders. The number of sliders that you'll see depends on how many cores your Ryzen CPU has. I've got the R5 1400 here, so mine shows four cores. If, for example, you have the R5 1600, you should see six total cores. And if you went all out and bought yourself an eight core R7 chip, you should see eight. These sliders are used to adjust the clock speed of your processor, but you can also use the text fields down here for more precise tuning. Note that these values are in megahertz. The row below that, we can see some radio buttons to disable an even number of cores. However, we're not going to talk much about this or why you might want to disable cores in the first place, as since you're watching a guide on overclocking, you probably care about your performance and wouldn't want to disable any cores. So make sure that this is selected to zero. Underneath that, we have some voltage parameters. From left to right, we have the CPU voltage, which we'll be manipulating, and also some memory voltage parameters, which we're going to leave as is. Now, we're not going to go into RAM overclocking today, seeing as that is such a big topic and a little more advanced than simply tuning your voltage and clock speed. It's also extremely problematic to write an all-in-one memory overclocking guide, as everyone is going to have success with different methods. Some of you might succeed with enabling XMP in BIOS, some of you may need to enter in precise latencies, some of you may even need to loosen the latencies, and the list goes on and on. Some quick tips though, if that is something that you are interested in, experiment with the XMP profiles in your BIOS, try slower latencies if you can't get your rated speed to run, and of course, it's a good idea to check your motherboard manufacturer's website for a compatibility list before purchasing any RAM. So if you've made it this far, let's begin overclocking your CPU. You can see these tabs down the bottom here, and right now you should be on tab C, which simply means current. This is a read-only tab, and you won't be able to make any changes to the parameters. To do that, we're going to create a new overclocking profile in tab 1. So click tab 1, and it should look pretty similar to tab C, the only change being that you can now actually change the values. As we discussed before, we're going to avoid much trial and error and start by boosting the CPU voltage from the stock 1.25 volts to 1.3 volts. I know from experience that all Ryzen CPUs can handle 1.3 volts no problem at all on their respective stock coolers. So I believe that this is a safe margin for all of you to start at. If you want to be a little bit more conservative, try starting at 1.275 volts, or if you're feeling confident, you can start at 1.325. You'll notice that it's not always a perfect 25 millivolt increment though. Instead, we're allowed to make increments of 6.25 millivolts. Now that we've added some voltage, let's increase the clock speed. Let's increase that to 3.7 gigahertz. You can save the profile if you want, as we'll be making changes to this in just a few minutes. From my experience, I've seen that most Ryzen processors are able to hit around 3.9 gigahertz, no problem. So that's what we'll be trying to hit today, but you might get lucky enough to reach four gigahertz, something that I know is capable on this particular processor that I'm using right now. Go to the top right hand corner and click apply. Your PC will likely want to restart, seeing as we've made some significant adjustments. For slight adjustments though, your system may be fine without restarting. So once your system has rebooted, let's verify the new clock speed and voltage. So boot up Ryzen Master Software and check tab C. It should show you the new clock speed and voltage values, or you might see some low values like you can see here if your CPU is just idling. Now let's test to see if this is stable under significant CPU load. Run Cinebench R15 a few times, and if things are looking good, then we can make some more increases. Note that it's a good idea to have Ryzen Master Software open on the side, as we also want to monitor the CPU temperature. The maximum temperature that these Ryzen CPUs can handle is 95 degrees Celsius, but at that point, the CPU is quite unstable and has to perform what's called thermal throttling, where the CPU regulates its own clock speed to reduce its temperature. The safe zone seems to be under around 80 degrees, but anything above that, and I'd recommend looking at some more effective CPU cooling to bring that down a little bit. Now, if Cinebench crashed or the system posted a blue screen during the benchmark, this is an indication that the CPU is unstable. And I'd recommend that your next step should be to either increase the CPU voltage or reduce the clock speed. My R5 1400 is nice and stable with 3.7 gigahertz. So I'm going to jump back into the Ryzen Master software and increase that. I recommend jumps of around 100 to 200 megahertz for your first few tests and that should give you a rough idea of where your processor is stable. I'm going to click apply and run the benchmark again to quickly test stability. Okay, so 3.8 and 3.9 gigahertz were also fine, and here I'm testing four gigahertz at 1.3 volts. Notice that the system doesn't need to restart since we're just making small adjustments now. We're still leaving that voltage at 1.3 volts until we hit a wall, as this gives you some usable data in the future if you ever wanna dial things back down to 1.3 volts. 
As I expected, 4 GHz was unstable at 1.3 volts. I couldn't complete a run on Cinebench and the system crashed. So we're going to try increasing the voltage now to 1.33 volts and try running Cinebench again. This time around, 4 GHz was stable. So let's see if we can go any further. Do note that the maximum voltage that you can apply to these Ryzen processors is 1.55 volts. So we do have a lot of headroom, but realistically anything above 1.45 volts and you'll likely need some aftermarket cooling such as a liquid AIO or larger tower air cooler. As you can see here, I'm trying to get past that 4 GHz mark, but nothing seems to be working. Eventually, you'll just hit a wall and no matter what voltage you try, the increased clock speed won't be stable. So, looking back on these successful tests, I decided that 4 GHz at 1.33 volts seemed nice and stable. So, to confirm this, I'm now going to run Prime95 for about an hour. I know a lot of people recommend testing for up to 24 hours, but I personally think this is a little bit excessive for a casual gaming PC. And I found that 1 to 2 hours is more than enough to expose instability from an overclock. If Prime95 runs successfully, congratulations, you've just overclocked your Ryzen processor. These CPUs get a huge boost in performance from these little tweaks to clock speed and voltage. And as you can see, it's really easy to do. Remember that each processor is different in terms of what clock speed and voltage it's stable at, and finding the perfect overclock for your unique processor is much a game of trial and error. So be patient, write down notes on which tests were successful and unsuccessful, and most of all, have fun. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to subscribe for similar content in the future, and I'll see you all in the next one.